The Joe Biden White House is now facing what is absolutely the biggest foreign policy crisis of the still relatively new presidency and administration of uh, the Biden White House. There has been an absolutely terrible terrorist attack in Kabul, Afghanistan. This is part of the broader context of Joe Biden deciding to make good essentially on the plan that Donald Trump claimed to have. Now, of course, Donald Trump ultimately did not leave Afghanistan, essentially ran out of time. Uh, but as far as we knew, planned to leave just like Joe Biden ultimately decided to do. And this is one of those areas where if you are looking for the sort of simplistic black or white Manichaean analysis of what is going on in Afghanistan, there's plenty of places to get that. There's no question about it. And we've seen many of those simplistic analysis analyses come from the usual suspects, the paid political consultants on both right and left for different reasons. We've seen them come from the military industrial complex friendly, generally pro war corporate media. And by pro war, I don't mean they want war per se, but they want conflict and salaciousness. And they know that military conflicts generate ratings. And unfortunately, all of those analyses fall short and there's good and there's bad and there's right and there's wrong. And it actually requires a little bit more thinking in order to get something approximating um, a, a view that considers a totality of what is going on. So we'll work backwards. Thursday, two explosions happened in an area right by the Kabul airport. This is an airport that has become a central location in what is now taking place in Afghanistan, which is many people trying to leave. There are Americans trying to leave. There are uh, uh, locals trying to leave and seek asylum or refugee status in the United States and elsewhere. As you are seeing the Taliban increasingly prevent people from le leaving to some degree. And also now we have introduced ISIS, ISIS claiming responsibility for the two explosions. These were suicide bombings. As of this morning, the latest numbers were 182 people killed, including 169 Afghan civilians and 13 members of the United States military. These are the first military casualties in Afghanistan since February of 2020. Joe Biden was uh, meeting the remains of the 13 deceased American military members when they arrived in the United States over the weekend. So let's go through each item here because, you know, it's actually kind of a bummer. I know that we're going to get really simple black or white analysis from most in the media. The right is saying this is all terrible because Biden's incompetent and Trump would have done it great. Well, no, he would have. Well, no, he, no, he would not have. Uh, some on the left are saying this was carried out the wrong way. Biden was wrong to leave or just this is perfect. And there, everything has been gone swimmingly. All of these takes fall short. Joe Biden was 100 percent correct to leave Afghanistan. Doesn't change anything about that. Joe Biden was completely right to leave Afghanistan. This does not mean as a result of this terrorist attack that we go back in my preference. Right. Of course, we, we might. Uh, I don't believe it means we go back in, but it does mean that Joe Biden has a crisis to deal with here. Now, for those saying this crisis is what's tanking Joe Biden's approval and this crisis is going to prevent Democrats from winning in 2022. I disagree and I disagree on both. And we're going to go into that more tomorrow. The political implications of this part of it is voters have a very short term memory. Part of it is foreign policy actually matters surprisingly little when it comes to how people vote in elections in the United States. We'll get back to that. But the fact that after just a few days of the United States pulling back, you have the Taliban taking over and then you have ISIS versus the Taliban. This actually reinforces how completely untenable our invo involvement was in Afghanistan. We have to stay forever in order to prevent this. That's proof that we shouldn't be involved since the only way to keep things even relatively calm, apparently, is to stay involved indefinitely. It's not viable. It's not viable unless you believe in the United States as the never ending policeman of the world, which I don't. That's not my foreign policy view. 
I thought it wasn't the view of a lot of Trumpists when it was Trump saying we're going to get out of there. Now, all of a sudden, those same people have changed their mind. I have not changed my mind on this. Uh, Trump should have left. Biden did leave. Obama should have left, but he didn't. OK, now, of course, the right is going after Joe Biden. Well, yeah, Joe Biden's a Democrat. They're going to go after Joe Biden. Yes, this is a crisis, but it would have been the same crisis under Donald Trump. We're seeing all the normal experts on foreign policy come forward and say, oh, we should have stayed. This is a humiliation for Biden um, should have gotten out differently. I have a completely different perspective without denying that this has not gone well because it hasn't gone well. We rarely see presidents act this decisively in getting us out of a commitment around the world. When presidents act decisively, it's usually to start an incursion and it's considered patriotic by the right. When George W. Bush said on my order, we have started uh, attacks in Iraq after 9-11 and all of this. Wow, decisive and powerful. Well, hold on a second. Is it decisive and powerful to start an incursion without actually thinking through the consequences the way George W. Bush did? This is the opposite, but it is decisive. Joe Biden has drawn a line and is getting us out of what George W. Bush started, what Barack Obama didn't end, what Donald Trump didn't end. Biden is ending it in the first year of his presidency, and that's good. And the situation has become very chaotic. And now Joe Biden has to figure out what to do. But remember that the status quo before we left was not some uh, utopia for the Afghan population. Two hundred thousand Afghans killed since we went in. It's been chaotic for years in Afghanistan, but nobody was paying attention. And now suddenly people are saying it only just got chaotic because Joe Biden decided to leave. That's wrong. It got more chaotic without a doubt. And now we have pundits and so-called experts saying the least interesting things. Just stay, stay for a month, stay for a year, stay for another 20 years. How is that even considered remotely serious unless your view of American foreign policy is uber interventionist? That's not my foreign policy. Joe Biden did a good thing by leaving left, right and corporate media in their own ways are slamming him. But the decision was the right one. Uh, now you have to figure out what to do with the chaos. All the same people who ignored this for decades are now jumping in like they've been paying attention and saying we should be staying or we should have left this way or we should have left. Give me a break, guys. This is the same media that mostly rode willingly into George W. Bush's Iraq war who are now saying, oh, let's stay in Afghanistan. Give me a break. There are real problems. I don't understate for a second the dire situation that is happening in Afghanistan. Life lost tragedy. But we've had that for 20 years and barely a peep from a lot of these same people. Now, it's a cynical, uninformed attempt to just go after Joe Biden. Joe Biden deserves criticism in all of this. But leaving was the right decision. Trump should have left. Obama should have left. Resist the urge to demand that something be either perfect or terrible. OK, reality is more complicated and it's too complicated for the really predictable, boring hot takes that we are seeing, including from all sorts of corporate media with various different political stripes. We're going to keep talking about it this week. By the way, one last thing. I got a few emails from people saying, David, why haven't you talked about Afghanistan? The first week of this crisis, I was gone. I just I just wasn't here. My guest hosts talked about it since getting back. I've done nine segments on Afghanistan. This today is number 10. Give me a break, guys. Find something else to complain about. One of our sponsors today is Nebbia, the creator of the world's most innovative showerhead. It uses only about half the water that other showerheads do, saving you money, helping the environment. But it's actually a lot more powerful than other shower heads on the market. It has twice the coverage of other shower heads. The water sprays with a ton of pressure. I've been using it in my bathroom at home. I love it. Only took a few minutes to set up really easy. And it's been a totally different experience than any other shower head I've used. I can get in and out of the shower way quicker now because of how powerful it is. It only takes a few seconds to get completely rinsed off. So I was actually amazed that it's only using about half as much water. Nebbia also offers a number of shower accessories like shelves and curtains, which match perfectly with the design of the shower head. 
The shower head starts at just one ninety nine and you'll get 10 percent off all Nebbia products when you go to Nebbia dot com slash Pacman and use the coupon code Pacman. The link is right underneath this video.